Skeleton loading screens show an outline of your content while waiting for it to load. It provides a better user experience and makes content feel faster than traditional loading spinners. Many popular sites like Facebook and LinkedIn use skeleton loading screens on their content. In Vue 3, Suspense components have made it really easy to add skeleton loaders. One thing to note is that as of the recording of this video, Suspense components are still an experimental feature for Vue 3, so they're likely to change up a little bit in the future, but the main principle should stay the same. In this tutorial, we're going to recreate the Medium Author section using Asynchronous Component, Skeleton Loader, and Vue's new Suspense component. Here's a quick look at what we're going to be building. While waiting for our content to load, there is a gray outline of our content that subtly animates between two gray colors. Let's jump right in. First, we have to create our Vue 3 project with Vite. So in our terminal, let's type npm init at vite.js app. Name our project and select the Vue template. We can now cd into our project, get our dependencies with npm install, and finally type npm run dev to start up our app. We can head over to the browser at localhost 3000 to make sure that everything is running correctly. If you see the V template, awesome. We're ready to start making our app. So how exactly is this going to work? And when should we even use a skeleton loading screen? Skeleton loading screens are most often used when a website needs to load data asynchronously from an API. In Vue 3, we can do this by creating an asynchronous component that shows our user information. All this means is that our component has an asynchronous setup method. Then, we'll create a second component that displays a skeleton of our user information. We'll do this by creating blocks of various sizes to represent the different parts of our component. Finally, using Vue's experimental suspense feature, we'll render our skeleton component while waiting for our asynchronous one to resolve. So that's the high-level explanation. Let's start programming so it makes more sense. First, let's create our default profile card.view component that will actually display our author information. Since this is asynchronous, we need to make our setup method an async method. We also want to create another async method outside of setup that loads in our profile data. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be using hard-coded data and a set timeout to mimic an API call. Then, let's import ref from Reactive, and in setup, create constant user data equal to a ref that waits for our async method to resolve. And don't forget to return it from setup. Let's get this data displaying in our template. We'll create a div with a class of profile card, and inside we need two main sections, one for the profile image, and one for the profile info, like the name and bio. Inside profile image, we want to create an image element and use vbind to set its source to the URL from our data. Next, inside profile info, we want to create a span that says written by, an h3 element that renders our name, and a paragraph element that renders our bio. Now, we can finally render this inside of our app. So let's go to app.view and make sure to import our new component. Inside our template, we can create our first suspense element. So this suspense element takes two templates. One we need to mark as the default, and one we need to mark as the fallback. Inside the default content, let's render our profile card. And inside fallback, for now we just want to say loading. So the way this works is while our profile card is asynchronously getting our user data, Suspense will render our fallback template. So when we run our app, we'll see that loading displays for a few seconds before being replaced by our profile data. So I'll admit, it's pretty ugly right now, so let's add a few styles. If you just want to copy the code, the link to the GitHub repo is down in the description. But if you're following along, let's first quickly remove some of the default styles in app.view. Now, we can start styling our profile card. We want to set the width to 100% and the max width to 700 pixels. Then, we want to set the min height to 180 pixels. And all of this allows for some simple responsive design. Next, let's change the background color to white, center our div, add some padding, and change the box size into border box. Finally, we want to set our overflow property to hidden to make sure that our div contains all of our floated elements. Next, let's style our two main sections. For profile image, we want the width to be 10% and float to be left. For profile info, we want the width to be 85% and float to be right. OK, now we're finally starting to get somewhere. To style our image, let's set its width to be 100% of its container, its height to auto, and then let's make it a circle by setting the border radius to 50%. Finally, we'll add this nice green border and add some spacing with a padding of 5 pixels. The last thing we have to do for this component 
is style all of the text. For the span, we want all of the letters to be uppercase and be a gray value of 777. And then to copy the medium style more precisely, we want to increase the letter spacing. For the H3, we want to add some margin to the top and bottom, increase the font size, and set the color to 222. The final style is the paragraph tag. And we want to set the line height to 140% and the color to match our span. All right, I think it looks pretty great, so now let's move on to creating our skeleton component. Although it may not seem like the most elegant solution, one of the best ways to control how our skeleton looks is to style each element. So that's what we're going to do. Replace each block of content in our profile card with a corresponding block. So inside our components folder, let's create another file called profile card skeleton. And we're going to be reusing a lot of the layout styles to ensure that our skeleton has the same outline. Because we did not limit our styles to scope in our profile card, they will automatically style our profile card skeleton as well. Our template will look exactly the same as profile card without any of the content. Then, the only other thing we need in this component is to add some scoped styles to add that gray background we're looking for. So for each element, which in our case is the profile image, span, h3, and paragraph, we want to add a height, width, and background color. For our image, the width is 100%. Instead of setting the height, we want our padding top to also be 100%. And this is one of the ways in CSS to make our height equal to our width. For our span, we want width to be 100, height to be 16, and then change the display to block for it to render properly. In H3, let's set the width to 250 and height to 24. Finally, for the paragraph, let's set width to 80% and the height to 16 pixels. Back inside app.view, let's import our profile card skeleton. And instead of rendering loading, let's render our new component. All right, let's check it out. So now, while waiting for our data to load, we'll get this clean outline of our component. So one minor touch that I think will make a huge difference is animating the background color of the gray blocks very, very subtly. We can do this using CSS keyframes and animations. So in Profile Card Skeleton, let's create some keyframes called Pulse BG. At 0%, we want the background to be EEE. -E -E. At 50%, we'll make it a little bit of a darker gray, so EA, EA, EA. And then at 100%, we'll transition back to our original color. We can add this to all of our classes by replacing the background color property with animation pulse BG. Set the time to one second and tell our animation to loop infinitely. If we reload our page, we'll see that the skeleton component has a very subtle animation. It may seem minor, but the small touch can really help improve the user experience. So let's compare all the different iterations of our loader. Without using Suspense, our, our app will load like this. So now here's Suspense with fallback text, our basic profile card skeleton, and finally with subtle animations. In my opinion, it gets better and better every single time, and the load time feels a little bit smoother and quicker with each one. Compared to having no fallback content, a skeleton loader really helps make load times feel shorter and can increase the conversion rate and performance of your web apps. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more view content. Peace.